So thank you everyone for signing up and joining in and listening to, to this, this month's podcast. I have Ronnie Bickard with me, who is a astrologer, tarot reader, artist, and illustrator. And we are going to discuss planetary lines and how astrology can help you to find your place on this earth, which is something that I find very fascinating. Um, I've obviously I've been to see you, Ronnie, and I've had my own astrology uh, reading with you and found that incredibly useful and beneficial. Um, and then you mentioned something around planetary lines and and I we didn't have enough time to explore that. So I thought it would be a good idea to discuss what that is and get some insight from you around how do you find your place on the earth using astrology? So maybe you it's, can Yeah, it's a very good garden system. Um, I find I found astrology incredible for, for gardens. It's obviously it's not written in stone, but if you if you follow the stars, you you can't really um, go wrong. So um, I became very, very interested in the planetary lines because I don't know where I belong on this earth. I really don't know. So I've, um, I, I, my story was, I don't know where this Venus belongs because my whole chart is ruled by Venus. And before I studied astrology, it was one of the paintings that I did. Where does this Venus belong? So it's quite amazing that the circle has is, is come full, 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 you know, it's full circle, and I've studied astrology. So um, there's a, a, a man by the name of Jim Lewis developed um, astrocartography. It's also known as relocation astrology, and it's also known as astro mapping. And what it is, is it's your birth chart um, relocated on different places on the earth. So people say, where do I belong? Well, where do you feel drawn to? So I was feeling drawn to Spain and I've got marvelous lands in Spain. My husband was drawn to Ireland. He's got marvelous lines in Ireland so you get an innate feeling about where you want to go and then you see which planets um, what energy um, is in that particular place for you and um, to give you your, the best potential that's possibly there for you because um, I know here in Cape Town, I'm on my Pluto line and I've been here on 10, for 10 years and I can't wait to leave. I can't wait to leave. I've done my growth. I've done my transformation and I need to get on with living now. So the Pluto line is not a line that uh, one would want to easily live on. It's quite, it's quite a difficult line. So um, having said that, it's, it's, very, it's a very interesting um, uh, concept and it, it'll take hours to actually unpack a whole chart so when I do a, an astrology reading it's just a, if somebody's interested we just quickly look at it but you know every wherever you go you take all your planets all your planets have different um, aspects to the the particular place so um, what is very important in your astrological chart the four um, angular houses are the most important houses and they about um, the first house is about self you in the world where you are in the world so whichever planets you you have at, at different locations I mean that's where you will really shine or not shine de depending on the planet and then you have your um, the um, the descendant, which is about relationships, that's the seventh house, that's also an angular house, the first and the seventh house are angular houses, and then you have the zenith, and you have the, have the nadir, and the one is the, the top point, the highest point, the zenith of the, of the chart, and the nadir is the lowest point of the chart, so those relate to the tenth house and the fourth house. So those are the four houses. So if you move to a place and any of your planets are any of those fourth houses, that's when it will have the most potential or not. 
And it would, would it mean that the, the, the energies of that space or that place are more support, supportive of you kind of moving into your full potential and actualizing that potential and actualizing your purpose? Yes, depending which planet, which planets are there. So um, when you have, I'll, I'll just go through them quickly. Um, your, your first house is about self. It's about where you want to shine. So if you have any of the planets in that one, that's where you will shine or not shine or have the most challenges. And then, as I said, those four points on the, the, the four houses on the, um, in the chart, that those are very important. So I'm just going to go through it. So um, there, there is an, an app uh, that I've got that I do the um, lines with. And then astro.com also has a travel thing that you can, that you can go on and um, look to see where you, where you want to be. But obviously, it's very nice to, to unpack the whole chart to see where it, where it really is. So I have got your chart in, in tow here. But I just want to go through. I just want to go through the um, the some of the some of the planets because um, you have your personal planets and then you have the the um, the outer planets. So the, the the first one is the sun. That is relates to self. The the the, the sun, and and that represents your will, your ego, your determination, um, how you strive in the world, and. Places along that line allow you to shine and live the best in your life. So if you really want to be out there, it's a kind of a Sagittarian thing. I'm out there. Let the sun shine on me. Or if you want to be a Leo, if you're a Leo and you want the sun to shine and really be noticed, the sun in your first house would be fantastic. Um, then the moon. The moon I found very interesting because... On a moon line, that is when your emotional energy gets triggered or not, because the moon is about the mother. It's where you feel um, you feel at home. It's your home life is important. It's it's nurturing. It's nostalgic. It's it, you feel emotionally at ease where your moon line um, crosses wherever in the world wherever you want to be so at one point we were looking to move to to France and my my husband and I both have our moon lines in France but we can't move to France because he doesn't want to learn to, to speak the language I, I don't care I'll just go wherever but yeah so the moon line is what draws you to be um you know um feel nurtured, you feel at home, you feel comfortable. It's a good place to buy a home and to feel settled. Then you've got Mercury, which is also a personal planet. Is it okay if I go through all these planets? Is this, this okay. Mercury is the planet of communication. It's about travel. It's the, it's the winged god, uh, the little god of, of, um, of communication. So it flits here, flits there, everywhere. It's about talking. It's about communication. It's about the internet. Um, and um, it's quite sociable. So yaggedy, yaggedy, yag, social talk, talk. It's, it's very sociable. And um, you, you can get involved with your local community with your, if your Mercury line's there. So my Mercury line was in Spain. I've always wanted to go to Spain. And you also said in a reading that Spain was a good place for me. I have my Mercury line on my ascendant there. So I'm sure I will learn to speak the language if I move to Spain. Then we've got the Venus line, which is, oh, you've got to be on the Venus line if you're looking for love and you're looking for confidence and you're looking for money and you're looking for the good life and pleasures and so on. Venus is an excellent line to be on. And um, it's about partnership. So if people say, where am I going to find my partner? We'll look for the Venus line and say, girly, this is where you've got to go. Or, you know, that's, that's where you will attract beautiful things in your, in your, in your life. And it is the artistic um, um, planet. It's also the planet of love and of money and of life, really. It's a, it's a beautiful planet to live on, I think. And then the next planet is Mars, 
And Mars um, represents your passion and your drive, but it can also be quite military. It's, it's also the planet of war. So um, you, you don't really want to live on a Mars line, but if you've been living on a Neptune line and you're kind of out there and, and you need some energy in your life, it's good to go to a Mars line because it will, it will give you quite a lot of energy to, um, to explore, to do, to, to get your passion going and so forth. Um, it, it's a really get up and, and go planet. Um, and it represents our desires. So it's also like a bit of a sexual desire. So if you move on your marginal, your Mars margin line, you might have a little bit of passion there. Then the next one is Jupiter, which is also a fantastic line to, to, to be on. Jupiter is free thinking. It's, it's uh, philosophical. It's, it's the planet of abundance and, and luck. It's expansive. And it really is a very positive um, planet. Um, so if you want to, if you want to make a lot of money and you want to expand your business, and it's also the guru planet. So if you, the teacher is also part of the Jupiter because it's it's um, yeah, it's 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 the guide, it's the Zeus, it it, it teaches. So it's a very that's a beautiful planet to be on. So. Out of all the planets so far that I've mentioned, if you want to choose a place, the sun, Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury. Mercury is neither here, here nor there. It's, it's, it's kind of neutral. So you'll, you'll make it in the, in the Mercury line anyway. And then Saturn. Then we've got Saturn, who is... Um, it's old energy, it's stuffy, it's the taskmaster, it's, um, it's focus. So it's not all negative, it teaches us a lot of stuff. Um, but, it, but it's focused and it's organized and, it's, and, it, and it teaches us a lot about our karma. It's actually get your act together, planet. So if you've been very slacked, slack, um, it's, it's, you, you, if you want to go to a... Um, Saturn line, it can also be where you work hard and you can be successful and so on, but it's a, it'll take longer. It's the old man, you know, it's the um, Saturn is the old man, so it'll take longer. So if Saturn is in your in 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 your seventh house, which I spoke about relationships, you generally will be with somebody that's older in, in partnership. Then you have Uranus, and that's the planet of revolution and awakening. Um, on both a personal and a global global level, but I've, I've known of people that live on the Uranus line. They have like electricity going through their body, and they they feel very uneasy, and things change in a nanosecond. And it's it's a yeah, it's a, it's a hectic energy. So you don't want to be in on a on a Uranus line for for too long. Go there, do business get all hyped up and leave. <laughs> Neptune, um, it's about dreams, it's about creativity, it's about fantasy, it's unconditional sentiments um, about, uh, yeah, it's, it's nostalgic as well. But the only, Neptune has a bad rap because they say, oh, it's drugs and it's alcohol and it's getting out of your, your, your space. But if you take it to be that that is where the artists need to be and the musicians and the poets and so on, it can be a very beautiful line for that. But sometimes that can be very dreamy and you, you need a little bit of Mars energy to get up and go. Okay, so you need all the planets, really. Then Pluto, as I said earlier, Pluto, um, it's really... <laughs> It's about transformation. We call it the little planet of death because things, when you go to Pluto, when you go live on a Pluto line, it, it, things die, things die, you die. You know, it's like, where am I? And it's, it, it brings about struggles. Pluto really brings about struggles. But as you struggle and as the challenges come, you do transform. But Staying at a Pluto line, staying on a Pluto line past its sell by date is past its sell by date because then you kind of expired. You can't do a Pluto line for too long. Hence the fact that 
I want to leave Cape Town because my Pluto line is done. Been here for 10 years and it's, and it's enough. Then I also look at the North Node and the South Node. The North Node is your, your destiny. So if a, if a little North Node line goes through a place, you know that you just, you're destined to be there or to visit it. The South Node is, is more past life stuff and it's a feeling of deja vu. Um, and then the other thing is your Chiron. I look at Chiron, the Chiron line, which is the wounded healer. And um, going to that place, usually your early wounds are healed when you look at your early wounds. So that's in a, in a, in a nutshell about the planets. Um, so, yeah. And are there partic particular countries where they have a strong planetary influence themselves? Or um, not really work like I'm that? Not, it depends on the, the country's or the city's chart. Okay. And that would be when it was formed and so on. So, so I don't really go on, on general places as, so, as such, but I, I look at the, the person's um, relocated chart. So I'll take the birth chart and then I'll relocate it to a particular place on Earth. Okay. Nice. So, do you want to know yours? Yes. Um, yes, please. Tell me I've got to get out of South Africa. Okay. Let's see. So Cape Town, I'm going to look at Cape Town for you first, and then we're going to look at where you're wanting to go, Vancouver. Hmm. Yeah, then we'll look at those. I've printed a whole lot of stuff all for you from my um, from my program, so Solify program. So I can you can come and collect it. I've done all my homework. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> so this is this is what your your Cape Town chart looks like. Okay, so all the chart, all the all the planets are there, but we look at the angular chart, angular um, planets which are, if you can see, will be the first planet there, the fourth house, I mean, sorry, the, the first house, the fourth house, the seventh house, and the tenth house. Those are the, um, the angular houses. So if there are any planets in those houses, that is when, where, the, where the potential or the challenges lie. So you, my dear, you have um, your Saturn, in your first house. Your Saturn line is in your first house. Yeah, that's and not a good thing. Doing. It's hard work, it's responsibility, oh, no. it's Come serious, on. it's alone, it's slog. It's like, ah, uh, you don't want to be on a Saturn line if you're a light worker and a spirited being. I would just say that that would be very, very difficult. And has Cape Town been difficult for you? Oh, yes. Okay. Then you have in your, it's not quite your fourth house, but it is your, um, it's just on the, on the cusp of your fourth house, but it does affect you. Is your Pluto line. <laughs> ah, I told you Pluto ain't good. Hey? But you know what? It's, it is a planet of um, total transformation. But with that Pluto line in the fourth house, the fourth house is about your family. It's about your roots. It's about, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about, yeah, it's your home, your family, your roots, where you feel comfortable and so on. So if you have your moon there, and if your moon was in that line, you would have said, oh, Cape Town, I love Cape Town. I feel at home. You've got Pluto and Uranus there, my love. They're both hovering around that, um, um, the, the, the cusp. Okay, just based on those three planets, I'm leaving tomorrow. Pack your bags, girl. Pack so your bags. bags. <laughs> so yeah, Pluto is 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 not um, is not a great place, and because it's in in that fourth house, it's near the fourth house. There, it's about challenges with family. Mm. It's, it's family. The fourth house is about family. Upheavals and family stuff. And, and it's intense emotions around family. Yep. Um, and then 
Also, um, when you're buying things, it can also be quite a, a difficult thing. It can be expensive and it's not easy. It's not an easy line to be on. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, that's Pluto. Okay. Uranus. Remember I said I had a, a person that, that um, she, she said she was like all nervous and she, she had to take Urbanol to calm herself down. Um, so Uranus is really energetic but it's also a good place where you want to learn about the internet and it's also a good place for for new inventions so if you were an inventor um or you you're going to start some new app or something uranus would be quite good but you can't stay there for too long because you will come out with frizzled hair so um yours is in your fourth house which is about family <laughs> so my darling so that you are quite frazzled with um with family stuff i'm sure oh yes i'm done <laughs> yeah then you have chiron which is um the healer the, the the wounded healer that's where your early wounds sit and your chiron in cape town is in the 10th house and it sits next to mars okay so you've got two planets in your 10th house in cape town Mars and Chiron. So um, Chiron is about the place where your wounds sit, where you heal the wounds. So it's very interesting because your 10th house and your fourth house, they kind of interact with each other. And um, you've got Uranus there and you've got Pluto, then you've got Chiron at the top. Tell me that Cape Town hasn't been a place where you have found tremendous healing. Even though you're out of here, it's been healing. You've learned so much. I, I, I think it's, it's yeah, it's it's been a it's been a challenging time. I mean, I, I moved here when I was 15 years old. And I think it's from that it's been challenging. And it's particularly challenging. from a family perspective and from finding my home, finding my place feeling at home here i've never felt at home here i've yeah. never felt like i belong here yeah. um and but at the same time it is where i started doing my work it is what pushed me into my own healing journey at a very young age as a result of that i mean i started my own healing journey when i was 20 25 26 years old exactly um you know so yes they've, they've so been it's it's deep transformation that has happened for you, even though it's been challenging and difficult and all those poofy words, it's, it has been, it's related to your early wound, your yes. early wound as a child, which is in your 10th house where it was, and it, and it is in Aries. So it's, I don't know if there was violence or anything, but it could have been, it's right next to your Mars and your Mars is also in Aries there. So it could have been um, verbal abuse. It could have been all of that stuff, which really squashed you um, in terms of being seen in the world because it's in your 10th house. And how are you seen in the world? You need to be seen as this powerful person. Got Mars there, so you can be powerful. But once that healing's done, you can actually take that healing and pass it on to others. Because the healer, the, the wounded becomes the healer. You know, the, the wounded healer becomes the healer. The wounded becomes the healer. Yeah. So, yeah. So that that is that. And then you've got the Mars as well, which is the planet of moving. And uh, I mentioned that. So, you, so you've got that whole axis, the 10th and the 4th house, your home, where you feel secure, your family and all of that, and your career are kind of at loggerheads with one another. There's like a... There's like a tension because they they opposite one another. It's like an elastic band, really. Uh -huh. That feels about right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then, just to do this chart, um, your north node is sitting in your seventh house. Now, remember, I said your seventh house is about um, relationships, and um, you learnt. With your North Node is, is a line of destiny. Remember, I said you, 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 yeah, it, it, it is your destiny line. Um, this is where you learned a lot. You, your, your destiny was with people. Your destiny was with relationships. Your destiny was with 
the others because the seventh house is always it's about marriage and relationships and so on but it's also about business deals but it's also about the other your first house is about self and your seventh house which is on the axis of the of the first house and the seventh house so it's yourself and others so your your destiny your north node your destiny was really to learn about others hmm. So it's very, it's very interesting because your the planets in your in your first house. Um, yeah, and yeah, where are we talking here? Yeah. The planets in your in your in your first house, which are difficult ones, and um fourth house, seventh house, tenth house. So on those angular houses that I spoke about, and they're all at loggerheads with one another here in Cape Town. Yep, packing my bags tomorrow. Cape Town's not your place, my love. <laughs> That's what I can say quite, quite um, comfortably. Uh, yeah. Well, I've always known it. You're just confirming it. And you, and you felt it, didn't you? Mm. So here it is. That's Cape Town. Of course, Je Johannesburg, where you were born, has a totally different energy for you. A totally different energy but we but we're not going into the natal chart we're just doing the the planetary lines for relocation so my darling let's have a look at uh where you want to go where do you want to go well you know vancouver's looking pretty attractive and so it is <laughs> and so it is so as I said before, you know, each place has potential energies that you can that you can tap into. And um, so the, it can be for holidays, it can be uh, work, it can be lovers, it can be all of that. So Vancouver, my darling, you, this is your map that I, I've scribbled all over it, but that's your Vancouver chart. And um, I'm going to start with your first house. Remember, that's about you, self. And in your first house, you have Jupiter. Yay! Hey. Yay! Better than Saturn. Better than Saturn. Absolutely. So you've got Jupiter in your, in your first house. And it is a joyful planet it's such a it's a joyful planet you will feel joyful you will feel um expanded you will feel um energized mm -hmm. also um jupiter is the teacher jupiter is the guru the teacher so it looks as though when you go there there's going to be a lot of teaching that you will do Okay, and I think that's what you wanting to do there. Yeah. So Jupiter, Jupiter is really um, that guru planet. People will follow you. You are a natural teacher. You become a natural teacher. Whereas in Cape Town, it's like, oh, how can I do this? So that's Jupiter in your first house. And when I've pulled the pulled the chart, your first house is very big. So, Madam, you are going to glow there. You are going to you are going to shine. You're going to glow, and it's 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 going to be excellent for you. Um, it's also Jupiter expands your world, so you'll have um, more access to the world. So traveling will be a big thing, and also um, in the first house with Jupiter, because it is Jupiter is the planet of learning, um, publishing self-publishing um self-promotion all of that will be will be great there so a book is coming i'm sure yeah three three and um also your your teaching all your all your teaching and your wisdom because you've you've done cape town now and you're wise enough to go and pass on this knowledge <laughs> go girl Go girl. Cool. The only thing about the Jupiter line in the, the in the first house, Jupiter in the first house, you got to be careful not to put on too much weight, because Jupiter is expansive, but it's expansive in the body as well, which so is you mean know, I've got to be careful of those delicious custard creams that yeah yeah I think so I think okay. so <laughs> I'll be I'll be conscious of that okay okay. But you know what? If you're having fun, who cares? 
I mean, if I'm happy, does it matter? No, it doesn't. Oh, the other thing is that with, with you glowing and shining and all of that, um, there is a possible um, partnership and marriage because it's the first house and then related to the seventh house. Remember, there's that axis there. Hmm. That'll be nice. But now I'm going to go to the seventh house because you understand the axis of the, of the seventh house. Um, you have one, two, three, four planets in your seventh house. Good. So you've got Mercury there. So you'll have a lot of fun. You'll have a lot of fun. There'll be communication, hence the writing of the book, hence the traveling, hence of all of that. I told you that, that um, Mercury is actually quite a, quite a cool planet. It's, um, it's ideas, thoughts, words, all of that kind of thing. So you've got that. So it'll be very nice to have a partner that you can, or partner or a friend or somebody that you can go into business with that you can, that you can bounce ideas off each other. And then you have the sun in your seventh house. Yay. Go, girl. So with people, um, the seventh house is definitely about partnership and relationships. So I would predict that there's somebody waiting for you across the water, my dad. Because... <laughs> Vancouver, your sun in your seventh house, Vancouver, here you come. And right next to your sun in the seventh house is um, the moon. So you've got Mercury, the sun, the moon, and Venus all in the seventh house if you relocate to Vancouver. Tell me that that's not great. Well, that's um... Relationships and, I mean, you'll shine, the moon, you'll feel at home there with a partner and then you've got venus there as well i mean what did i tell you about venus couldn't get better than that your fourth house um in in um in vancouver is there isn't really a line going through your your rc that that um the Nadal, there isn't anything going there um but it's in but it is it's it's in Taurus and it's ruled by Venus so when that seventh house stuff happens there your, your home is going to be fine it's not going to be full of the challenges that you found here in Cape Town with your Pluto and your Saturn and all of that stuff and then the other thing that I must tell you is that your 10th house you have Neptune there so remember I said it could be dreamy but it's also very very connected psychically artistically it is, it is the psychic um, sp and spiritual planet. So your career, other than your home, you shining and your, and, your, and your relationships flourishing and so on, your career will have a deeply spiritual um, slant. Mm -hmm. It will be deeply, deeply spiritual. And you'll have all these other planets to to give you the energy you, you're not going to go there and and flake out like some of the people here in Cape Town that they, they, they can't deal with life so they alcohol and mm. plant medicines and all of that not not knocking it but I'm knocking it okay <laughs> All right, so, um, and then, so, so that, that will be really be good. And it's also your Neptunes in, in, in will be in Sagittarius in, in Vancouver in your 10th house, which is, Sagittarius is also the teacher, the, the teacher sign, and it's ruled by Jupiter. I mean, go figure, go figure. Yep. And the last thing I just want to tell you here about um, Vancouver is your north node is in the 12th house. Your north node moves into the 12th house. And the 12th house is not an angular house, but it is a very, very important house to end karma. So I remember you told me a story of your great-grandmother who uh, was of the original tribes there. Yeah. So yeah. it is, you are going to go back there. It's part of your destiny to go back there, to uncover a lot of the stuff that happened, that was hidden, that was secret, because the 12th house is about secrets, it's about um, 
institutions, and, and you'll probably write a book on the first people and, and, and relating to you and, and, and the uncovering of all of this. Mm. Because you're destined to go there, mm. absolutely destined to go there. Yeah, because we we don't we don't know anything other no. than she was adopted. Mm. Yes, but but you you will find that out because that that is also one of your one of your missions to go there. Yeah, because it's all been secret. It's all been covered. It's all been you know nobody knows about it. It's twelfth house or North Nose in the twelfth house. So you're definitely going to uncover a, a lot of stuff there, and um, also what will happen through all of that doors will open. As doors close behind you, doors will open. And um, you're also destined to meet people and groups of people that um, that will be part of your soul group. And also with your north node in your 12th house, as I said, it's, it's, it's a spiritual house. It's a, it's a, it's a house of karma. But... It also, you can, you can deal with groups, spiritual groups. It's a teaching thing. So you're actually going to go there to teach. That's your destiny. In whichever way, to heal, to teach, to do all of those things that you already do now, but it's, but it's just going to be a lot. Um, it's going to flow a lot. Be easier. Also, also, in your eighth house, so it's, that is not a, an angular house. So it's not that important, but I must bring it to your attention. You've got Pluto and Uranus in your eighth house. Your eighth house is about other people's resources. So I'm say, I'm thinking that with Uranus there and Pluto there, Pluto is also a transformation, but it's also a, a, a planet of money. Okay, it's also money. And that the eighth house is also about stuff that you that you need to uncover. It's also a very mystical kind of house. But with Uranus there, things will happen very quickly and the transformation will happen very quickly because those two planets sit in your in your eighth house. So uh, and it's other people's resources. So I'm sure you'll get all the help you need with all the projects you want to do. Fantastic news. I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow. Are you really leaving tomorrow? Have they opened Canada yet? I don't know. Don't think so. But, you know. Oh. I'm definitely starting to pack. Yeah, pack, my love, because it's good. Okay, with, your, with your, those four planets in the, in the seventh house, beautiful. Jupiter, just Jupiter in itself in the first house. That's all you need. Mm. Mm. That's all you need. Wow, so that, I mean, that, that this is amazing, Ronnie. So for anyone that's thinking of, of, and there is so much movement currently as people are realizing that, you, you know, we don't need to be locked into a particular place in the world because of that's where we were born or that's where we've always lived or that's where our family comes from. There is a lot of people, there are a lot of people that are moving. I, mean, I know of a few people that have, um, left Cape Town or South Africa and moved to England in the last six months. Yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of shifting and changing. So this is a perfect way to be able to determine whether where you are wanting to move to is actually going to work for you and be supportive of you rather than Absolutely. moving to a place that is going to just challenge you and create more, more difficulty and, and yeah. Yeah, ch challenge it and, and where your potential is not realized, you know. So it was very interesting. A few years ago, we moved to England as well. I loved it there because my Mercury is in England and I can play and I can do all of that. But Richards, um, he had a satin line there. He was as miserable as hell. He was heavy. He was so Saturnian. And the Saturnian thing with my Mercury, it, it just didn't go. And came back to South Africa. So he came to Saturn and Jupiter and Mars down here. And I came to Pluto. I have not thrived in Cape Town. But I've grown. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that. Well, I think that, you know, just based on what I you've now told me about being here and Pluto, there's been massive growth. There's been massive um, transformation. But, right. you know, you get to a point where you need a bit of a, 
breather to be able to now live out the transformed self rather Absolutely. than stay to in that front. Well, you change. can't stay in that too long. You know, Pluto is somewhere in somebody's chart. There's, there's always a Pluto in your chart. But you don't want it in any of those angular houses where it can really affect you quite badly. So, yes, um, but once the transformations happen, happened and with the Chiron and the healing and all of that, you can move on and you can spread your wings and the potential is so much greater. I mean, we're not trees. We can move. We can move. And thrive. And thrive and have fruit and have abundance. We really, and you know, the world is full of these places that are so abundant, but they're abundant and, 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 um, and there's a lot of potential depending on where your, what your planetary lines are, where. Mm -hmm. So it's a fascinating, um, fascinating study. I absolutely love it. And I'm sure that, you know, if we, if we look at, um, I didn't write too many notes about Cape Town because I thought it was quite depressing. But, <laughs> the, you know, also karmically, I mean, there must be a karmic destiny and reason for, for you know, for example, for me choosing from a soul perspective to be here and, and, and to move here at such a young age and to go through all of these things at such a young age, to then be able to take that and expand expand and move forward and and teach people with that knowledge yeah. it's like the foundations were here the yeah. roots are here but as yeah. i said you're not a tree so you can you know the foundations you've got the roots you can take them with you because you're not a tree yeah. <laughs> and you can plant it somewhere else and grow and grow there so yeah yeah no that's brilliant Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And, and sure. for anyone that's listening and, and wants more information, um, Ronnie is available online, obviously, to do um, ast uh, uh, astrology readings. She, she incorporates tarot and um, some numerology into her, into her readings. They are very full in the sense that it's not just the the the, the astrology that you sh that you share there's so much more insight and clarity that you're able to give um so i re highly recommend recommend you to to anyone um but if anyone's wanting to get in touch with you i know that you you've got a website for your art yes you have yet got a website i haven't um, yet got a website for my for my other things <laughs> but if anyone wants to get in touch they can just head over to um the spirit pathways website um send us an email and i will be very you happy can. to make sure that awesome. yeah we give because you have all my details and that will be great kate so we can do, do that but thank you so much ronnie that was that was amazing my pleasure i'm glad vancouver it was good news yep, very <laughs> good news <laughs> thank you Thank you very much for this opportunity and many blessings to you and um, God bless. And to you. Thank you. <laughs>